Now, I, I mentioned this morning, uh, if you got if you got your bulletins, we may have some extra ones back there for anybody who did not get one this morning. It tells everything that's going on. Um, we're going to have a special youth youth visitation one week from Saturday on May 27th at 10 o'clock Saturday morning for all the young people. And we're going to hit the street, give out youth rally flyers. I'm sorry, I don't know why I, I may the youth rally. I keep saying May, April 27th. And so don't forget that. Uh, that'll be one week from Saturday at 10 o'clock. Our bus workers meet at 930 and then the young people are going to come in. We're all going to go knocking on doors and hit the streets and uh, hit Walmart and the flea market and everywhere just to invite people to church. So uh, the sign phantom is going to strike sometime this week. Uh, so you'll be seeing signs around hither and thither and yon. Uh, if anybody has a has a real good place uh, for one of those small ones, I got some in my office ready to go out of here tonight. These need to go out of here tonight. Uh, we need to get these things up. Uh, I mean, a bunch toward Hickory, a bunch in the Lenore area. You could take an hour. You could take one hour and hit the major spots, post office, maybe some uh, convenience stores. Take your own scotch tape and say, do you care if I put this down here in the window in the corner where it won't bother nothing? And most of the time, they'll let you. Not always, but most of the time. Some places have a uh, have a bulletin board, and they'll let you put it on the bulletin board. And what you're doing in bulletin board, they're covered with stuff, so you look for something that's already passed, you know, like last month or something, and just take it down and put the youth flyer up, okay? And uh, uh, so let's get these things out of here tonight. And uh, let's just enjoy the Lord this evening. Amen. We're going to have just a little short time of fellowship. Uh, we'll, we'll not have the choir. We're going to move real fast. So everybody stand, turn around, and just be friendly to each other. We do that? Let's do that right now.
just mean saying we'll do our offering now. We'll have a lot of help for you, Rally. If somebody can get all of them away there, they ain't but five years old. Somebody can bring them. I'm going to have a lot of help. Let's say by give this evening honor the Lord. Amen. We're glad to have this young man right over there visiting with us all the way from Gastonia tonight. <laughs> I've known him for a long time. He's up visiting with us tonight. Y'all make him welcome. And uh, Brother Jim, and it's good to be here. If you didn't get your offering in this morning, you might want to do that tonight. Honor the Lord, and uh, he'll bless you for it. Uh, if you missed the, mo the morning service, you might want to be sure and get that. Uh, a few that were not in here, I preached on, I want that mountain. And I'm talking about uh, when something's ahead of you and it's big and how to how to believe God and get what he's got for you uh, when you're facing a big challenge. And that was this morning. So it'll, it'll probably be on YouTube before the week's out. But uh, I hope that you'll take that message to heart. All right, let's everybody give. Now, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thanks so much for all you've done for us. Pray now that you'd bless this offering tonight. Please, Lord, let it be just what you want it to be. Meet with us. May your presence be in this place tonight. We'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Now, I'm going to mention a couple things here, man. When after she sings, um, I've got about four texts on my phone of people that couldn't get here. Uh, trees cross the road, bridge, you know, flooded out a little bit. So I know we had a lot of folks planning on being here tonight, and we we're supposed to have a bus workers meeting. I'm not sure that's going to be able to happen or not. We'll try. But uh, anyway, uh, did y'all see that rainbow coming down this way? That means God hadn't forgot his promise. And so uh, give me up just a little bit on this thing, Jeremy, if you don't mind. And uh, Marty's got a song for us here tonight. I was in a valley. I was sinking low. I had slipped and fallen. Yeah. I had missed the goal. Condemnation threatened, and I cried out in fear. Mercy said, forgiven, come and fly up here. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He lifted me way up high and set my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it, the Lord and King, the creator of everything, loves me with a love that won't stop. If you bear the burdens of a sin scar life, mistakes and failures, Haunt to you in the night, you can be forgiven. For God's word is true. On the wings of eagles, you can sing and too. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He lifted me way up high and set my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it. The Lord and King, the Creator. Of everything loves me with the love that won't stop. He loves me with the love that won't stop. Amen. That's true and that's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. We're going to get our Bibles open now. Uh, we're going to really get in the Word of God here for a minute this evening. Let's um, remember... Now, uh, Wednesday night, I'll be here Wednesday night. We're going to work with the kids. Uh, I don't have to be gone no more for a long time. Uh, we've got revival coming up about the middle of April, in which we'll be taking the choir again down to uh, Shelby, down to Brother Chris Little's church. And uh, 
but I won't be going much uh, more for a good while. And I don't like it when I'm not here. Um, so uh, I hope that you'll you'll be here Wednesday night. Come pray and bring somebody with you. And uh, uh, the Lord bless you for that. Now, um, we're going to take our Bibles tonight and turn to the little book of Philemon. It's the little book right before Hebrews as you're getting toward the end of the New Testament. Only one chapter, 25 verses, and it's an a epistle written by the Holy Ghost, by the hand of Paul, the apostle, uh, to, uh, to Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborers, what it calls him. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this little book because you never hear anybody preach about it. You never hear much, much preaching on, on this, in, out of this little book. And I want to give you a thought from it tonight. The thought I'm going to give you is not specifically the way this scripture was meant, but I will not do any damage to the scripture, pulling it out and using it how I'm going to use it. And a matter of fact, there might be right on the way a double meaning on it. And many scriptures are like that. Like when, when Paul told Timothy, till I come, give attendance to reading. He was telling Timothy that. But when we read that, that's the Holy Spirit telling us that. Yeah. Till the Lord comes, give attendance to reading. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he, he, when he was writing it, he meant one thing to Timothy, and that was right. And then the Holy Spirit stamped it, and it was inspired by God, and the Lord used it to us in, to relate in our day. That's why the Word of God is not bound. You can't just centrally locate and say, it only meant this for that time, da, 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 you know, that type of thing. So uh, the book of Philemon, uh, this was written around the mid-50s, 55 A.D. So this was only... Uh, less than 20 years after the Lord Jesus Christ had resurrected and gone back to heaven. Philemon may be, have been uh, one of those bishops, bishop same being as elder or pastor in a house church in Colossae. And it's a book about servanthood and forgiveness and acceptance. And what happened here was this man Philemon had a servant by the name of Onesimus. And he run away, sort of broke free or whatever you want to call it, and run from his master. And while he was away, got saved and was with Paul. And he went back to serve Philemon. And Paul was basically saying, uh, when he, he comes, look, if he owes you anything, put that on my account. It's a picture of salvation. I'll take care of his bills. I'll take care of him. Accept him. And y'all do the work of the Lord together. That's basically what this little book of only 25 verses is saying. And But I want to look at, at, as, uh, look at verse number 21 this evening. And he said, Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing, you're going to treat this man right, that's what he's saying, that thou will also do more than I say. Now, verse 22, and that's what I want to get to. But with all, Prepare me also a lodging. He said, I'm going to come see you. I'm going to come and visit you. So get me a room somewhere. Fix a place for me to stay. Prepare me a lodging. For I trust that through your prayers, I shall be given unto you. Now, I want to preach on them four little words. Prepare me a lodging. I have never heard a sermon on this. And I really, I don't think I'm doing the scriptures any disservice by using it like I'm going to use it. Paul was telling Philemon, get me a room ready, uh, Philemon, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given you. Now, we're going to use that as, this evening as a picture of the Lord saying that to me and you. Prepare me a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be will be given to you. Every time I read that, that's what I think of. Every time I read it, and I've read that a many times. Every time I read that verse, I look at it like that's Jesus talking to me. And Jesus is saying, prepare me a lodging, Danny. Fix me a place that I trust that through your prayers, I shall be given to you. Now, a very amazing statement there that the 
uh, that Paul made when he said, I trust that through your prayers, I shall be given unto you. You know what Paul was saying there? Are y'all, can y'all get that? Paul, Paul was saying, look, I really want to come and see you. I really would like to visit you. I'd like for us to get together and have some fellowship and, and pray and do something for God. Uh, but man, I don't know if I'm going to get to make it or not. You better pray that God will let me come there where you're at. Isn't that something? Paul was telling him, say, look, I want to come see you, but it might not happen if you don't pray. And he said, uh, he said, Philemon, get down on your knees and pray. So Philemon gets down over here and say, Lord, would you please, please let Paul come? So God in heaven hears that prayer and moves the opposition so Paul can come and be a part of that. Isn't that something? That's, he, he was constantly recognizing spiritual forces that was working uh, to stop you. A lot of times we think, well, we really want to go Friday night, but this happened. We really want to go to a revival every night, but that happened. And it's the same people every year. This stops them from coming. That stops them from coming. And they just think, well, it just happened. This happened. That happened. And you know what? Every time, it's not just stuff happening. There's forces working, stopping you. There'll be stuff trying to stop you from going to youth rally. There'll be stuff trying to stop me. I can feel it sometimes. I, sometimes it's so obvious. I'm going to say, I'm going to stay in all evening. I, I plan on tomorrow evening and Tuesday getting down to business. Uh, tomorrow and Tuesday evening especially. I plan. Uh, but now just as soon as I do, somebody will call. Something will happen. It'll be hard for me to concentrate. It'll be beautiful weather. You know, oh my goodness, and you want to get outside so bad, grass is growing, everything. I say, but I want to do it, but there's feel like there's something stopping you. Now I believe tonight that the Lord wants to come to the youth rally. Amen. I believe he does. And you know exactly what I mean when I say that. I know he's gonna be there. I know he's in our heart. I know, I know if I, if you went, if you went, if you went to Moscow right now, you'd take the Lord with you. I know that. Do you know what I mean? I know the Lord would love just to come down and do a great and mighty work in the youth rally. And you know what he's saying? The Lord's saying, prepare me a lodging. And I trust that through your prayers, I shall be given unto you. Isn't that something? Man, that puts a lot of responsibility on us. Man, that puts a lot. Of, God don't just jump around and say, hey, I'm going to bless them and Ain't going to fool with him. He's looking for somebody that's willing to pay a price and prepare him a lodging. So I want to use it in that sense tonight, and I hope that you can get it. Example, and this is going to be really short, so, so give me your attention. Imagine, let's just say tonight that uh, you got a phone call, and it was somebody really important, maybe a, a dignity, maybe a maybe a, a, a somebody that works for the state or the government, or maybe your superior or boss man or your instructor, maybe even some of your family. Like I got family up north. I got family in Ohio and West Virginia. And if they called and said, Danny, I'm going to come down on the 1st of June. You know what I'd tell Kelly? I'd say, we have to prepare them a lodging. In other words, we got to get ready. My family's coming. And there's certain things do to get to get things ready for them to come right uh absolutely now if the lord's going to come to youth rally you know what he's saying he's saying y'all prepare me a lodging up we're going to meet and have prayer meeting saturday night seven o'clock saturday night uh we'll not we're probably not going to have our all night friday night prayer meeting like we normally do on that friday night before i have to preach down in moxville so we're going to meet on saturday night this saturday night i know it's before easter and all of that but get your dresses and and, and iron them up and run it if you can. And we're going to meet and pray Saturday night and practice songs also. Listen to this. What if the Lord looked down? He said, y'all, shining light, I want, to come to the, I want to come to the youth rally. I want to be there. And I trust that through your prayers, I, the power of God, shall be given unto you. It's not up to him. It's up to us. We don't talk God into blessing us. He wants to bless. We don't talk God into saving people. You know, a lot of times we say, Lord, please save old so-and-so. The Lord said, I'd be glad to if they'd just come to me and repent. I'd be glad to send revival. Somebody wanted it. I'd be glad to send revival. Somebody pay the price. I'd be glad to send out blessing if somebody was willing to pay the price. Need to I trust that through your prayers, I shall be given to you. Now, if you had big time, important 
big shot company coming this week. What would you do? I sat down and I wrote down three things, three more things. Number one, we would take out the trash. We definitely would take out the trash. You don't want your company coming in and seeing three or four. How many of y'all have three or four trash bags? Store, uh, there's one full, there's one full, there's one full. And I'm telling you, uh, you know, it, it gets, I, I, it's been a long time since I had kids in the house. Uh, when Corey wore diapers, it was a long time ago. It's been a long time. And old Frankster over there is the, is the, is the first time we've had, I forgot how bad diapers smell. I'm telling you, my heart goes out to anybody that has to live in that. Uh, I, I come in, in the house the other day and, whew, Lord, help. Curl your nose. I, I thought, Lord, have mercy. I said, honey, it stinks in here. And you know, if you're in there during the whole process, change everything, you, you don't smell it as bad. It's kind of like a bunch of drunks at, at a bar. They don't smell it and they knock you down. Uh, cigarette smoke and, and alcohol and everything. And I walked in and I said, shoo, Lord, it stinks in here. This is awful. And now, look, what if you had company coming to the house and you walked in there and said, Lord, have mercy. This is awful. This stinks. Uh, get it out of here. You'd want to take out the trash. You know what I'd want to do? I'd get every nasty, dirty thing, banana peelings, coffee grounds, uh, everything, uh, scrape it off the table, all the baby diapers. I'd tie it up in one of them plastic bags, tie it real tight, and brother put it in the car or in the back car. You know, we, we, we can't put it outside. You know, dogs, every dog in the community be over there tearing into it. And uh, so you have to, uh, you put it, don't put it on top of your car. You'll have dog, you'll call, you'll have claw marks down the side of it. And, and, uh, and get rid of that, get rid of that junk, get rid of that trash, get rid of that trash, get rid of that trash. Take, if, if you got company coming, take the trash out. And I would say tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to prepare the Lord a place to come down to youth rally, that's what we're going to do in our life. Take out the trash. Amen. Take out the trash. Get rid of the junk. Get rid of everything sinful. Get, you got junk on your phone? Quit it. Get rid of it. You got, listen, have you got movies in your house laying over there that you wouldn't want the Lord to see if he come in your house? Get rid of it. Amen. There ain't none in my house. I, if they are, I don't know it. There ain't no movies in there. If Jesus come, he'd say, what's that doing in here? What's that doing in there? Hey, listen, get rid of the trash. Take out the trash. Uh, get rid of some CDs. Uh, get rid of some music. Get rid of some... Uh, you want the Lord to come? Prepare Him a lodging, man. Clean it out. Clean it out. Clean out the junk. Every once in a while, you know what you got to do? You just got to go through the house and get everything that's trash and put it in the back of the truck and haul it off to the dump. And you ought to do that to your life sometime. Search your heart. Get everything that's trash, all the gossip, all the lust, all the wickedness, all the lying, all the wrongdoing, and get rid of it. Take out the trash. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to clean the house. Clean the house. You don't want dirt uh, in, in the house. Uh, we've been thinking about getting the carpet clean. I put asphalt sealer on the driveway years ago where we could play ball out there and it'd be smoother. And I really put too much and it's, it's like black junk gets on your shoes. We can play ball out there 30 minutes and your hands are black. Like that stuff, it comes off and it's coming in on the carpet. And she said, we're going to have to get somebody to come and clean this carpet. We sure do. A house don't automatically stay clean by itself. It has to be clean. All you ladies in here know that? Listen, if you don't believe it, go visit them with us sometime and see what a house does where it's not clean. Lord, it gets it don't get better. It gets worse and worse. I'm, I'm, there's sometimes people open the door and there's a stench. That smell. I mean, I mean, they just throw... I, I mean, I, I really can't say nothing because I do it too. So you come in, throw, throw, throw your socks down. Oh, there's a pair of tennis shoes. Oh, oh there's a pair of pants. And it ain't going to be long till you just got a little path you walk through. And there's stuff on one side. So I have seen, I have seen with my own eyes uh, people uh, where there's Pepsi and Mountain Dew cans just laying all every corner of the house and ants going in and out of them. I've seen roaches crawl around on the ceiling every few minutes, tick, 
tick. You could hear them hitting the floor. I've seen them, brother. I, we witnessed to a girl over here in the trailer park one day. She came out, didn't want to come in, and she came out center talking to us, and a roach coming out of her hair and jumped on the wall and, and out of her hair, not lying. I, I, listen, you may not have it that bad. I hope you don't. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. If you got company coming, we got company coming. The Lord's coming. Get the dirt. Wash the dishes. I've been in people's house. People said, Oh, Lord, preacher, I'm sorry. I ain't had time to wash these dishes today. And I looked at them. They, they didn't get that dirty today. Uh, that ain't today. I, I, listen, that gravy on there, it'd take a jackhammer to get that stuff off of that. That's been laying there a week. Amen. <laughs> That's been a week. I piled up and piled up and piled up. Company's coming, people. Company's coming. If company's coming to your house, well, I remember my mom used to drive herself crazy. If we had company coming, she'd be down on the scrubbing things, cleaning the windows and everything. She wanted the house to be nice. She was preparing a lodging. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the great I am, the spotless Lamb of God wants to come to the youth rally. Let's clean him out of place so he'll feel welcome. How about that? Say amen. That's right. Clean the house. Dust furniture. Amen. Get rid of the trash. Amen. That's right. You know, the Bible said over there in Matthew 13, 58, that the Lord went to this town and he could do no mighty work there because of the people's unbelief. I don't want the Lord to say that. I don't want the Lord to say, well, I was going to come and bless that youth rally in 2019 and I was really going to move in there, but y'all didn't believe and nobody prayed and everybody was too concerned about their own things. And people wouldn't fast, so I just didn't come. I don't want that. I don't want him to say I could do no mighty miracle there because of their unbelief. I want to clean the house. House. I want us to clean the house. I want the junk out of my heart, out of my life, out of my house. Just like you clean your house for company coming, let's clean our hearts out and make him a lodging. Amen. Happy is the man who walks so close to God that he leaves no room for the devil to come in between him. You know, I read the other day, you hear about it. I talked about the Super Bowl not long ago and all the stuff that went on at the, the NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, men's college basketball. Uh, happened up in, was that up in Minnesota or somewhere the other day? And here's what you didn't hear in the news. They put it on the news, but it never, major news networks never mentioned it. Did you know that during that tournament up there in Minnesota, <coughs> excuse me, that they arrested. I want to have married her. <clears throat> they arrested almost 60 people, sex trafficking kids, in the, for that basketball tournament. <clears throat> You'll not hear that on the news. ABC won't say a word about it. No, you know, we don't want to paint that in a bad light. They said there was girls under age being sold all over that town. i never seen a beat in my life. Listen, we're talking in major cities, kids, y'all. Eight, nine, ten, eleven years old. Don't you think we need the Lord? I tell you, I'm going to say thirdly. You know what else you do? Cut the grass. Clean the yard up. Look good. You want your house clean inside. You want your house, your yard to look good outside. Usually, if somebody's got a grass that high and two or three junk cars with grass growed around them, and junk and the last 15 years lawnmowers out in them grass somewhere. You're not going to go in there and find a spotless house. Listen. I don't have about once every 10 years. Um, that hardly, <coughs> excuse me, 
if that yard, in other words, let's, let's just make this real short, okay? My throat's hurt. If that yard looks awful on the outside, it probably don't look too great on the inside. You're, if, if it looks that bad on the outside, you're probably not going to be there and walk in and everything's spotless and in place. So the outside is a picture of the inside. Now, I'm going to tell you all something tonight. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we, we had an overreaction in our Baptist churches in the last 15 years because there's so many preachers preach such legalistic stuff and such hard stuff that people ought to dress a certain way and all that. And, and people got sick and tired of it. And so they rebelled and went too far the other way. But I'm going to tell you something this, this, morning, this evening. And you get clean on the inside, it's going to show up on the outside. I hear people all the time say, well, it don't matter how you dress. It don't matter what you wear. It don't matter because God looks on the heart. God looks on the heart. It ain't God we're trying to win. It's people. And people can't see your heart. All they can see is on the outside. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. You can tell a lot about a person by their out. You can tell a lot of people about, by the way they wear their hair. You can. You say, you shouldn't do it. I know you shouldn't, but you can, can't you? I'm telling you this evening, listen, cut the grass. Down yonder this week, the bus went Friday night. We went through that community down there in, in uh, Gastonia. And there was some of the prettiest yards. That's why this time of year, I love this time of year. That grass was perfect green. Them azalea bushes I don't know, were purple and pink and white. And the dogwoods were blooming. I, to me, that puts fall out of business. I know people like fall. Fall, everything's dying. This time of year, everything's coming alive. Amen. Prettiest time of the year. In my opinion, we are in the prettiest time of year, April. <clears throat> and, uh, and we looked at those yards, and I thought, you know, sometimes that can be vain. Sometimes people are vanity and spend too much time and money on the yard, try to outdo their neighbors. I understand that. But there ain't nothing wrong with taking what you got and making it neat and clean. When you go to church, you ought to look like you're going to church. We come to present ourselves before God, brother. We shouldn't look like we're going camping on the lake for the weekend. Amen. People say, well, I'll just wear this because it's comfortable. You, you may remember that all the little girls and all the little boys are looking at you Dress like you're going to church. Fix yourself up like you're going to church. Smell good or at least don't stink. If you see weeds all over the yard, limbs on the roof, porch falling in, you can pretty well be sure the inside don't look too great either. Number four. Number four. Make it smell good. Make it smell good. I'm about through. Make it smell good. Spray it. You know what my mom used? <clears throat> Clorox. She put Clorox on everything. Everything. That's a great idea as far as I'm concerned. Clorox kill AIDS. Did you know that? Can't use it though because it'll kill you too. But if, if you can figure out if you can figure out how just to get it on a disease, it'd kill it. But mom used to wipe everything down with Clorox. And to this day, I love I, I like the pool. I don't put extra chlorine in the pool. I like to smell it. I think it smells clean. I don't I love to smell bleach. And uh, she hates it because it turns her hair green and uh, it, it makes, makes it feel weird and everything else. And we're trying to convert to salt this year. Uh, but uh, make it smell good. The odor of the ointment in John chapter 12 and verse 3 filled the house. Man, don't you like to walk in somebody's house? Don't you like to walk in a restaurant, go in the restroom or something, and it just smells real clean? Get it ready for company. Get it ready for company. And the last thing, have all the family there. 
If you want all the family there, if he comes, get him. I'll tell you what I've done one, one time and back last fall. <coughs> Excuse me. I had last fall. Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. The Lord sent, sent us a great camp meeting as a married couple going through troubles. And I begged them to come on Thursday night. When those nun girls are here, best, best service we had to me the whole week. Power of God fell, and they didn't come. And they're in the process of getting a divorce right now. If they had been here that night, that marriage may be together tonight. That's how important it is. If the Lord comes to that youth rally, you want to make sure all your family's there. If Jesus come in here and sit down on this table in the flesh, it ain't going to help people if they ain't here. Then we got to get them there. If I'm going to have big time company and a big shot over my house, I'm going to clean the house. I'm going to cut the yard. I'm going to take the trash out. I'm going to make it smell real good. And I'm going to make sure all my family's there to meet my company. That's what I want us to do. The Lord said, prepare me a lodging. For I trust that through your prayers, I shall be given to you. All right, let's stand by our head. Miss Desi's coming. Play softly tonight. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. <clears throat> Father, I pray now in Jesus' name. You'd help us. I tell you what, let's do. Let's just have a youth rally prayer meeting right here tonight. Let's just come. Everyone that will can. And just gather around here and pray for a minute tonight before we go. And prepare him a lodging. Prepare him a lodging. That's right. Say, Lord, I want to clean the house, take out the trash. I want to prepare you a place to stay when you come to youth rally. Amen. Oh God, dear Lord, Lord, I beg you tonight in Jesus' name that our hearts will be purged from anything that's wrong or sinful or wicked, any hard feelings anybody has. <clears throat> toward anybody else <clears throat> have to get them out right now any bitterness any sin that we've tolerated in our lives helps to turn from it take it out right now just like throwing the trash out helps to throw it out of our lives help us to be a blessing help us to be a witness and a testimony for those out there in this world who can't see our heart all they can see is our life Help us, Lord, to be ready for the youth rally and prepare you a lodging. And through our prayers, you'll be given to us. Bless this service. Bless our church. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Put your hand on us one more time. Lord, bless all the preparation. Send the money in. Lord, bless all the, the, the food preparation. Bless all the bus workers. Lord, as they put forth extra special effort. Lord, I pray that you bless uh, the singers as they prepare, the choir. Lord, for the, the soul winners, the witnesses, the people that visit, people that put out flyers and everything, God. Please, Lord, God, do what ought to be done in their life. We'll praise you and thank you for it. Get us ready, we pray. Come and be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm still praying tonight. Amen. 
All right, you can be seated. Amen. All right, now here's what we'll do. You come up and sign up on one of these sheets.